Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're getting into something a little bit less game dev specific and a little bit more about programming in general. And that is the release of Microsoft.NET Standard 2.1. Now that's a bit of a mouthful and I should do a bit of an explanation of what exactly .NET Standard 2.1 is because this is starting to get a little confusing at this point in time. When you think .NET, .NET is an encompassing name. Now .NET Standard is the common glue that makes it all work. In recent years, Microsoft has taken a much different approach to uh, uh, .NET in general. It used to be their proprietary framework to try and suck people into their platforms and force them to use it. That is the joy of .NET framework, and that is where we have things like um, uh, ASP.NET and WinForms and various other platform-specific functionality. Well, since that time, they've become a much more open-source friendly company, and they per and they've um, released some .NET publicly uh open source, and then .NET Core is this cross-platform version of .NET. It's focused more on server and command line tooling, but it is cross-platform. So you can run .NET Core stuff on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, and whatever platforms they decide to support in the future. And then you've got Xamarin. Now, Xamarin was basically a open source clone of um, .NET Framework originally. It is, uh, Xamarin is the company that uh, started Mono, and then the Mono Framework, they basically built their own .NET version. And then fast forward in time, Microsoft bought Xamarin Studio, and now you can think of Xamarin as the mobile port that is now open source of the .NET Framework. All right, confused yet? Hopefully not. So those are the kind of the three different things you've got in the world. So you've got the .NET framework, which is kind of a, an encompassing term, but a legacy term. But below all of that, you have .NET standard. Now .NET standard is the magic that makes all the cross-platform stuff work. This is the universal library. It's sort of like the um, standard C library, if you will, but much bigger in scope. So this is the bit of .NET that every single other aspect of .NET builds upon. These are the basic Lego blocks. So when you functionality goes into .NET Standard, it goes into Xamarin and .NET Core and .NET Framework. Ultimately, this is the foundational stuff, at least almost the foundational stuff. Below that, you have like the implementation type stuff, like the uh, the common language runtime, the compilers and the languages and you know things like C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET, all that stuff. But those are a layer below and we're going to ignore them today. So we're gonna think of at a coding level, when you program, say in C Sharp, the bit of code that you can guarantee that will run on every single different kind of implementation of .NET, that is .NET standard. So why is this particularly relevant to game developers? Well, there is one new feature in .NET standard that's built on new features in C Sharp and other language support uh, that is massively huge for game developers. And that is Span. Now, span doesn't really sound that initially impressive, uh, but it is. Basically, this is the way that you can handle continuous memory. So now you can deal with memory kind of like native. So this is one of those big complaints that people have always had about C Sharp versus C++. C++, oh, you have fine-tuned control, you have direct access to the memory, you've got full lifetime handling of memory, blah, blah, blah. Well, now you have all of that in C Sharp as well. Basically, it allows you, so here we go with the description. Uh, we added Span T, which is an array-like type that allows representation managed and unmanaged memory in a uniform way supporting slicing without copying. So basically, you can take a large continuous block, be it from a C++ plus DLL or from your own C-sharp code, and you can deal with it as one large block. You can split it up, you can slice it open, and you don't have to do copies to make that happen. So what the result is, is due to SPAN, you can do all kinds of performance optimization. And they're making SPAN a first-class citizen in the framework, and the underlying parts of the framework are going to work around SPAN. So we should see some huge performance gains here. We'll, we'll get to this article in a second. And it is excellent, and I highly recommend you read it. And of course, I will link it down below. Now, this gets into a whole lot of specifics, and I'm not going to cover them in this video. But I do want you to be made aware of SPAN, because this is one of those fundamental shifts for .NET developers. This is going to change things. If nothing else, if even if you don't use it, you should see a lot of algorithm options opening up here. So performance should just improve in libraries that you do work on. So for example, if you're a game developer and then Unity starts implementing Span, they should be able to optimize their code because they have more fine-tuned control over memory as a result. And at the same time, you have things like uh, Mono Game can also no doubt optimize what they're doing. And especially if you are working with bindings to another language, the 
fact that you can work with one memory pool, either managed or unmanaged, makes those bindings. There's a lot of opportunities for optimization as a result of this span improvement. So on top of that, what else have we seen here? Uh, foundational APIs working with span. I guess that's what I was just talking about. They're basically building span uh, into uh, other aspects of the .NET Core. Uh, and another one that's interesting is it's available as a .NET standard compatible uh NuGet memory as system.memory. And we'll get back to system.memory in a second because there's another class that is very relevant to all of this. Uh, reflection emit to produce product. The .NET ecosystem has always made heavy use of dynamic features such as reflection and reflection emit. Emit is often used. Da, 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 da. Previously, we tried to provide this via NuGet package. We discovered that we cannot model such a core technology using a uh, package. In case you're not a .NET developer, NuGet is their package management system. Um, so it enables you to quickly add uh, dependencies to your project and will automatically download them and use them. It's a lot like um, NPM. Uh, if you're a JavaScript developer, for example, but better. Uh, with .NET Standard 2.1, you'll have access to lightweight code generation as well as reflection emit. Um, yeah, move on from that. SIMD, uh, simple inline... Okay, I'm going to Google this one just a second. Yeah, we're going to screw that up. Single instruction, multiple data. This is part of um, it's just CPU level stuff for uh, optimization and uh, performance. Uh, this sport was added in .NET. Uh, the .NET framework, .NET Core, has uh, had support for SMI, SIMD for a while now. We've leveraged them to speed up basic operations such as string comparisons. Uh, we received quite a few requests, and we cannot add this to the NuGet package. And I'm not really sure what they're announcing as a feature there. Uh, value task and value task T in .NET Core. The biggest feature was improvements in our fundamental support, high performance scenarios, which includes making async a weight more efficient. Value task T already exists and allows to return results if the operation completed asynchronously without having to allocate a new task T. With .NET Core, we've improved this further, made it possible, uh, made it useful to have the corresponding non-generic value task that allows uh, reducing allocations even for cases where the operation has to be completed asynchronously, a, a feature that types like socket and network stream now utilize. Again, this is a kind of the lower level stuff that should result in nice across the board performance things. Uh, we got some DB stuff, don't really care about, and uh, general goodness stuff across the board, 800 new members in the .NET Core, so just little tweaks here, there, and everywhere. Um, yeah, and then a little bit more about the governance and things that are going on. But again, the two big things here, no doubt, are the changes to uh, value task. And the big one, again, is span. And now I'm going to go to that linked article. This basically explains what span is all about. So... What is span t? Span t is a new value type at the heart of .NET. It enables the representation of continuous regions of arbitrary memory, regardless of whether that memory is allocated with a managed object, is provided by native code via interop, or is on the stack. Notice one thing missing, nothing about the heap. And it should, and it does so well, still providing safe access while performance characteristics, with performance characteristics like that of arrays. Uh, so again, this is a really cool way to basically treat a big chunk of memory like a big chunk of memory, regardless to where it came from. And again, that interrupt option is pretty cool. So you can get a, a chunk of memory from C++ as a chunk of memory from C++ and just work with it. No needs to copy it or, or change it otherwise. Now, one thing that is important, and again, you get into the whole behind the scenes of how they actually implemented spam. And then what we get to then what's kind of interesting is memory T and why do you need it? And this is all predicated on this functionality was predicated on the addition of ref types in 7.1 or 7.2 of C sharp. Um, and span T is a ref like type as it contains a ref field. A ref field can refer not only to the beginning of objects like arrays, but also to the middle of them. Uh, these references are called interior pointers and tracking them is relatively inex uh, is a relatively expensive operation at the .NET runtime garbage collector. As such, the runtime constraints these ref to only live on the stack. So that's going to provide a problem if you want to manage memory on the heap. And there, that is where memory T comes in. Uh, you can create memory T from an array and slice it just as you would a span, but it's a non-ref-like struct and can live on the heap. Uh, so that is where memory T comes in. So if you are working with just some on the stack, uh, you can use span T. And if you need to use it in uh, the heap, uh, you can basically use memory T. And there's a whole lot more specifics here, but that is kind of the general gist breakdown. Um, 
Now, this is definitely a cool development. It's not going to change the way that a lot of people work unless you're writing libraries or frameworks or whatever. But those people writing those libraries, those frameworks, those interop libraries that work with man uh, unmanaged code elsewhere, Span should result in some pretty significant performance improvements and should be incredibly relevant to game developers, eking even more native-like performance out of this nice managed language. So that is is the news. Uh, .NET Standard 2.1 is now available. Uh, again, it, it, it's a little bit of a low-level plumbing thing, but I figured uh, the addition of Span T was definitely worth covering here on this channel because that is going to have definite ramifications on memory-related performance. And when we figure managing and using memory is like nine-tenths of code, it seems like these days. So uh, it's definitely a relevant change. So let me know what you thought. Uh, are you a .NET developer? Are you looking forward to using this new function? or any of the other additions that were added into .NET Standard 2.1? Are you a little confused still about how the whole ecosystem breaks down and what the .NET Standard is versus .NET Core.Work Framework, uh, base class libraries, Xamarin, etc.? Because if you are, don't worry, I understand that confusion completely. It is a little bit confusing to get that, but hopefully this video helped clear a bit of that up uh, without adding much more confusion on top of it all. Anyways, let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.